Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 8th of February 2021 and the time has just gone 9.12 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, at the back end of last week, uh, we had a fairly mixed and a bit disappointing US non-farm payrolls report. Uh, the headline reading came in at 49,000, so 49,000 jobs were created last month, pretty much bang in line with the Reuters estimate uh, but of, of 50,000 jobs, but it was well below the um, 100,000 uh, jobs, jobs forecast that the Bloomberg survey had, had shown. Um, in addition to that, the previous month's reading uh, was revised from negative 140,000 to negative 227,000. Uh, and with that, the, 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 there became a bit of concern that perhaps the US economic rebound is running out of a bit of steam. Um, on top of that, um, we also had a bit of added volatility on Friday when it was announced uh, that Robinhood, the popular um, uh, uh, trading app with uh, that's, that's, that's popular with uh, retail clients, particularly in, the, in light of the, um, the short silver, the, the silver squeeze and the, and the volatility seen in GameStop, um, that company came out and removed its restrictions on GameStop. Um, so we did see a bit of extra pressure put on European equity markets at the back end of uh, on Friday. But um, things simmer down in the, towards the latter half of the U.S. trading session, and the, the view that U.S. politicians are going to potentially push through the 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus package proposed by President Biden um, was, again, was it was the overriding theme of the day. Um, so even though we did have some uncertainty and a not so hot U.S. jobs report, uh, the S&P 500 closed at a record high on Friday night. Um, that led to a positive. Uh, positive trading session in Asia overnight. And here we are in Europe, um, market, Italy markets are moving higher again. Um, over the weekend, we heard from, from Johnny Yellen, former head of the Fed, and now the US Treasury Secretary. Um, Janet Yellen stated that if the if uh, the US, US government does, participate, does pursue this $1.9 trillion stimulus package, uh, it could bring about full employment um, next year, by the end of next year. So that's really been spurring things on. Um, so for the time being, the, the, the focus on the US politicians getting through, uh, passing that $1.9 trillion stimulus package has been essentially the main focus of the, of the, um, of the past 24 hours or, or, or so. Um, with that, um, I'll look at the, I'll do the usual rundown, the usual rundown that I normally do. I'll look at the week ahead article and then I'll talk about the major markets, major indices, major currency pairs and major commodities. So the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com under insights, under latest news and analysis. We've got a fairly, fairly busy enough corporate reporting calendar for as far as the, uh, as far as, uh, the UK and the US is concerned this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, tomorrow we have full year figures out from Mercado, the uh, the well known uh, and clearly popular uh, online grocery grocery company. We'll have uh, fourth quarter numbers coming out tomorrow night from Twitter. Um, people will, will be looking out for any kind of um, guidances or, or in relation to how they're doing how they're doing in terms of revenue and any kind of concerns the company may have made to potential changes in regulation uh, that could be on the horizon uh, for all, for social media companies. Um, we're going to have fourth quarter numbers coming out from Coca-Cola on Wednesday. Um, Don Elm, uh, one of the kind of more kind of successful re kind of high street stories uh, from the UK. They have first half numbers coming out on Wednesday. Uber, um, Uber have their fourth quarter numbers coming out uh, on th on on, uh, on Wednesday. Now, even though their actual their pri their primary business. Um, um, Essentially, essentially being a rival to a taxi service. Um, Uber Eats has become very popular in light of, of, of the lockdown. So it's likely we're going to see that component of the business take off and kind of balance out, balance out the, um, the, 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 the ride-hailing um, service of business. AstraZeneca have also been in focus in, in light of the, um, in light of, of the, the vaccination. Uh, they have full year numbers coming out on Thursday. And Disney have first quarter, first quarter numbers coming out <clears throat> on Thursday. And uh, their their streaming service Disney, Disney Plus is going to be uh, is going to be one of the areas of interest for traders, uh, especially seeing as the kind of you know the Disney theme parks and the like have obviously been hit quite hard on account of the pandemic. Uh, Ted Baker, uh, the, the fashion house here in the UK, they have fourth quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. 
Uh, and on Friday, we have a couple of a few economic indicators coming up from the UK, and the big one is Q4 GDP. Uh, this is going to be the real question of how things fared in the final quarter of 2020. And keep in mind, you know, between November and December, pretty tough restrictions are in place for much of the UK, so it's likely we're, we're going to see a not so impressive reading. Uh, we also have UK industry and manufacturing production figures coming out from the UK uh, on um, on Friday morning. Uh, starting off with the FTSE 100, we can see here at the FTSE 100 hit a multi-month high uh, back in January. It had a bit of a bit of a, a move to the downside, and then last week, last Monday, had a decent move to the upside. A uh, very bullish candle at the scene uh, this day last week, Monday the 1st of February. And since then, it's been pushing higher. But notice how it struggled to get above that blue line there, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 6,579. So it's struggling to get above that metric. While we hold below that metric, it's, it's, likely, it's likely that the, kind of the near-term negative trend uh, could remain intact while we hold below it. But if you do manage to get back above the metric, that area, which is currently seems to be acting as, as resistance, could potentially act as support, and that could might, might, might be used as a springboard to kind of head back up towards uh, 6,900 or head back up towards the recent highs um, of, of, of January at 6,957. Uh, if you do move lower from here on the on the um, on the FTSE 100, we could look at heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, comes into play at 6,283. We can see on a few occasions uh, that acted well, both, both, both as, we can see here uh, a few months ago, that acted both as support and resistance not that long ago, back in August and, and, also, and also September. So the metric has been important in the past. It makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. And if you notice where if you notice where the 100-day moving average comes into play, it's not too far away from the uh, from the lows of last week, which is also not too far away from the lows of late December. So that entire that zone, 6,300 down to around um, that entire zone of 6,300 down to around um, uh, how much is that? down to around the 100-day moving average in at in at six, it's at 6,283, so that zone of around kind of 17 points could act uh, as a very decent area of support. Um, coming into play, uh, starting over on, on Germany, taking a look at what's going on with the DAX. So we can see here, <laughs> the DAX has been in a very positive run. If you notice, if you look at the candle that was seen last Monday, very bullish indeed. The market's been moving higher. It's, it's comfortably above its 50-day moving average in a 13,651. We're basically essentially in kind of you know in or around all-time high territory on the DAX. So the market's clearly in, in um clearly in good shape. If it continues to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting you know 14,100, 200, 300, so on and so forth. So we, we will be moving further into um uncharted territory in terms of achieving all-time highs, but the, the trend is clearly very much to the upside. Move to the downside, could find support from the 50 moving average, this blue line here. And if you do even go below that, we could look at heading back down towards the lows of last of uh, of, of last Monday. Similar similar sort of story <clears throat> with the uh, with, with the with the uh, with the FTSE 100. In that, even if you do drop below that, we could find support between from from the 100-day moving average just south of 13,200 in a 13,198. Because we saw on a few occasions that metric has acted as support in, in the past. So keep an eye out for that area. Should we have a very decent move to the downside? Uh, looking over in the US, US markets are even stronger. Record highs were, were posted very much recently. It looks like we could see uh, when cash trading commences today in the US, it looks like we could be on for uh, further record highs. We're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open at 31,237. So we're still very much in the kind of wider upper trend. We're comfortably above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. If we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards 31,300, 400, 500, so on and so forth. You know, it's not, you know, the next big number is 32,000 away, and that's still a, a fair distance away from here. <clears throat> Any moves to the downside, support could be found from the 31,000 area. And if you go below that, we could be looking at heading back down toward this blue line, the fifth of the moving average in a 30,493. And if you hope, it's only really, you know, if you have a size of break below that, then we'll be looking at heading back down towards 30,000. 
over on the S and P five hundred, similar scenario whereby once cash trading commences, you know we could easily see uh, an all time high racked up on the S and P five hundred. Um, you know we're currently expecting the um, the S and P five hundred to open at three thousand eight hundred ninety seven. So we're not too far away from three thousand nine hundred. And then of course, if obviously if you go beyond that, we then be you know, achieving even newer all time highs. Uh, so, so the upward trend is still very much intact. Uh, should we see move move to the downside? It could head, head back towards 3,800. I'll back down towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average unit, 3,750. And if, even if you go below that, we could be looking at retesting the lows of last week in a 3,664. Secondary markets, as we saw there, were, uh, were all clearly quite strong. <clears throat> um, taking a look now, what's going on in major currencies? One of the themes <clears throat> that has been kind of on, has been getting reasonably popular the last few weeks and months has been that whenever there's been whenever there's been whenever there has been um, weakness uh, in, in equity markets, we've sometimes seen strength in the U.S. dollar because traders. Um, deem it to be a low risk asset. That, 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 that necessarily hasn't been, always been the case, but it's just something to keep an eye out on. And um, there's other issues going on as well. It, it's given given the US economy's uh, economic rebound in, in comparison with that of the UK and, and in comparison with that of the Eurozone, the dollar itself has been attracting more funds recently because, because it seems that the traders have kind of identified that the US economy is going to rebound and can reopen sooner than say the UK economy or the, or the Eurozone economy. That's the kind of the view some traders have been taking. And with that, we've seen a very recently strong US dollar recently. So the strength of the dollar has put weakness on, on the uh, on the on the euro versus the dollar. But we saw here last uh, last Friday this candle here has the potential to be a bullish engulfing. And make notice how this this uh, the rectangle here completely engulfs the previous day's red um, red body, the, the red red rectangle. So it could be a sign that the um, that the, the recent negative move that we've seen in the last few the last couple of months could be coming to an end and the market could be turning around. So if you do manage to get a push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the fifth day move of the average in at one spot at 21.45. A move beyond that could take us up towards the kind of one spot 22 area. And then if you go north of that, we could then be looking at retesting uh, the kind of two, two and a half year high that was seen in early January. On the flip side, um, if, if the market does manage to move lower, and if we manage to move lower, turn over on itself, and if we manage to take off the low seed last Friday, we could then be looking at heading back down towards one spot 1923, this kind of general area here below to late November, and a move below that could take us back down towards down around this area here in at one spot 18. So even though um, we have seen um, some considerable weakness in euro dollar, we haven't seen that that same situation play out with pound dollar because the pound dollar uh, starting to sell it reasonably well. It's been moving higher the last few the last few weeks and months. Hasn't been terribly strong against the US dollar, but keep in mind the dollar itself has been fairly strong. But it wasn't that long ago we were at we were at its highest level in well over two years on pound dollar. So pound dollar here clearly in its in its continue in its uh, overall uptrend. It's currently trading at one spot thirty nine, sorry, one spot thirty seven oh nine. If you look to move on higher from here and if we get a broad bullish trend of the last few months continues, we could be looking at targeting one spot forty. That that'll be the next big number to look out for to the upside. Um if we do manage to pull back, we could find support from this blue line, the fifty day moving average in at one spot 35.41. And we can see how on a couple of occasions, very nicely um, in December, mid to late December, the one on day moving average acted as support. So keep an eye out of that for potential area of support. And even if you go below the blue line, the 50 moving average, the yellow line, the one on day moving average, which as you can see here on a few occasions acted as support as well, could also provide support should we have a fairly decent pullback in the pound versus the dollar. Turning our attention now to what's going on with the gold market. Gold saw a lot of volatility recently. It's been it was kind of dragged around by the move we saw in Sterling last week, which I'll come up to in a second. Um, but we can see here that that um, the gold the gold market hit a multi-month high uh, in January, but since then we've had a lower low, we've had a lower high, and another lower low. So we seem to be in a kind of a near-term negative trend uh, with gold. Uh, if you do manage to move lower, and if you take off the lows of last last week of last Thursday, 
uh, we could be like heading back down toward this area here, uh, 1764. But <clears throat> if you can manage to hold above the, the recent lows, and uh, if you can move to kind of uh, hold above the 1800 mark as we're currently in the 1812, if you can hold above 1800, we could look at potentially retesting this zone here in around 1855, 52. It's kind of where the what 200 day moving average, the red line and the blue line, 50 moving average converge. Uh, and then if you go beyond that, you could find resistance come into play, <coughs> excuse me, at the yellow line at uh, 1871, the 100 day moving average. And notice on a few occasions that that area acted as, as resistance uh, back in October and also again back in December. So once again, if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. Now I'll talk about silver as well in light of the the, uh, the big move we saw about about uh, about a week ago. Uh, silver had a mo major move to the upside this day last week on the back of the uh, the short squeeze that was applied by the retail reach the kind of hold of retail investors targeting targeting it like like how they targeted GameStop. The, the the metal hit its highest level since March 2013 uh, on on uh, February and March 2013 on the back of it. But since then, it, it quickly, um, the bullishness and the excitement quickly faded out because future derivative exchanges started increasing their margin requirements to trade silver futures. So that took kind of took the wind out of the sails uh, and kind of um, calmed down the bulls, as it were. So we saw a pretty move, pretty large move to the downside uh, last Tuesday. But notice how we're still very, and even the lows of last week are still very much above the lows um, of late January. So the recent upward trend in silver is still intact and if, if, as long as we hold above say this blue line here the 50 moving average in a 25 spot 52 if you can hold above that it's likely we could see the broader upward trend look over the last few months the broader upward trend of the last few months continue and should that be the case we could, we could look at heading back up towards the 30 area uh, and even if, you, and, and, and even if market turns lower and if you take off the lows of last week and we drop below the um the 50 moving average we could look at finding support from the 100 day moving average this yellow line here in a 24 spot 84 and a move below that could take us back down to the lows of mid-january in a 24. and lastly coming on to brent crude oil the cash contract um we, we basically hit essentially hit a one-year high or close to a 12 month high uh, on, on brent crude uh, it's been in a strong upper trend the last few months a number of factors going on here um uh, stockpiles, according to the EIA, are at the lowest levels since March last year. Um, on top of that, OPEC Plus have maintained their production guidance uh, in, in the near term. To be fair, that was expected. But, but on, the, on, the, on the back of the news last week, um, that US policymakers are looking to kind of push through um, President Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus package without the support of Republicans. That's kind of added to the overall kind of bullishness uh, that we've seen in the oil market. Uh, and that's why we're seeing oil at a 12 month high, you know, a one year high um, for uh, for Brent crude cash market. Uh, if you do manage to kind of push on higher from here, because we're currently just, just trading around $60 a barrel, we could be looking at retesting 66 spot 44, um, the highs of mid January 2020, mid, the highs of mid January um, 2020. So the highs ever achieved just over a year ago. And if you do manage to pull have a, have a pullback from here, we could be looking heading back down toward the kind of the kind of 56 zone down to around 54, um, 54 spot 47, like the lows uh, of of mid January. So that entire zone, and even if you go below that, we could see support come into play from this blue line here, the 50 moving average in a 53 spot 10. Um, that's all from me from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.